Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And, and everything was going fantastically. And then one second before I came on, my uh, headphones unplugged. And now I can hear you. I can't hear you. I can just hear my theme music. My lovely copyright free theme music. Music. Ah, which we're going to slow down now. How are you all doing? How's everyone been? You had a good week since the last, the last camera show? That's how we date events around here, is, is from camera show to camera show. So this is, this is minute zero. Okay, let's go cut the music. Enough of that. For all I know, I would, none of you could hear what I was saying just now. Ah, so yes, how are we all doing? How are we all doing? I, 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 I've got to start with a confession, everyone. Uh, this might not be a particularly well-prepared show. Believe it or not, because I show you behind the curtain. Here, well, not literally. Behind me is a big piece of green fabric. Um, but the uh, the fact of the matter is, I got I got so deep down a developing rabbit hole this week that um, that it, that it severely impacted all the other things I was going to do for the show tonight. But it's going to be seamless. <laughs> if I hadn't just said that. You'd uh, you wouldn't even know that tonight's show is, is, has been a bit uh, bit of a bit of a scramble for material at the last minute because I was oh my god well I better I might as well start at the beginning I will start at the beginning um, I bought a new foam uh, thing for my microphone that's the beginning <laughs> because uh, I lost a viewer last week because he said that uh, my my P's and B's were popping I was popping into the mic and I needed a, a foam a foam protector for it. He actually tuned out. He said he couldn't. He couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, he couldn't. He couldn't listen to the to me going on about you know Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and all that and and he missed he missed out on the great. Uh, maybe it's because I said Ben's camera show too many times and the b -b -b I don't know. Listen, I, I totally understand it. I'm sensitive to noises as well. There's a certain there's a certain frequency will set me off like you wouldn't believe. I'm not going to tell you what it is. 47.56 kilohertz. Oh. Anyway. <clears throat> so yeah, so I got one of these. That's the uh that's that's the that good night everyone. That's the show. <laughs> oh god, I, that's the kind of quality you get on other YouTube channels, but uh but not here. But not here on Ben's camera show. Oh my god, the comments are, are running uh, are, are coming in thick and fast. John Oates is in the house. Hi Ben. Hi John. Hi uh hi Peter. Hi uh yeah, maybe it was you, Peter, who who talked about the bees. Well, thanks for coming back. Just to, thanks for coming back, Peter, to uh, to the Ben's camera show, because uh, it just shows that I listen to my audience and I act upon it. And I went on YouTube and I spent two pounds fifty and I bought three of these things. So if if one of them gets somehow worn down, I'll have I've got two more spare. And I got it blue as well to match the uh, the nitrile gloves and the shirt. It's just a default color, red, basically. Anyway, should we get on to some camera stuff? Let's. Let's, let's, let's. Um, ah, Ben Marshall says, does sound less plosive indeed. We can appreciate your efforts. Well, thank you, um, Ben Marshall. And there's more Bens in the house. There's Ben Reynolds is in the house. I just, it's, it's, it's hilarious. If, you, if your name's Ben and you like cameras, you've been brought here courtesy of the YouTube slash Facebook slash Google algorithm. And here we are. You're in your you're in your absolute idealized favorite place to be right now for the next hour. Let's get on. Let's get on. Orwo 54. Your Orwo UN 54 is a black and white film stock which is still made fresh by Orwo Industries who make a fair few different film stocks in in uh, standard eight super eight and 60 millimeter and my friend adrian cousins had a deal going with carl in germany k-a-h-l and he went and bought a whole load of thousand foot reels of orwo un 54 and being the uh, stand-up bloke that he is he offered me one well you know for, for how much it cost him uh, which is great because i got a thousand feet of super eight not standard eight but super eight fresh black and white super eight for i don't remember what it was but it turned oh uh, god it basically per cartridge cost was something like 10 quid 
when when you work it out, which is brilliant. You know, all those people who say, oh, I can't do Super 8, it's too expensive. You're not trying hard enough. You, there are deals out there. There are there are ways around, you know. The photographer, the stills photographers will tell you that if you buy 35 mil in, in huge, big reels of it and bulk load it into little uh, reusable 35 mil, uh, what are they called? Cartridges? No. I've gone blank. The, what are the little metal canisters, I guess? Canis, 35 mil canisters. It can be done in, in, in 8 mil as well and Super 8 as well. That's the way. I, I really want to get hold of a bulk load of color, though. That would be pretty damn cool. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to get onto Kodak about that. Anyway, so yes, I, I got some. And I finally, um, very carefully, uh, loaded it into a uh, Katsuyama. I don't have one lying around here, but I, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's a Russian, uh, a USSR-made reloadable Super 8 cartridge. Stay tuned next week. No, in two weeks. Two weeks. Not going to say any more. If you want to know more about those cartridges. Anyway, I put it in one of those and I went a shooting. I went a shooting with my lovely wife uh, on one of our lockdown walks because that's all you can do nowadays apart from stay home is go out for a walk. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Jesus. I don't care. I, it gives me a chance to film stuff. And then when I'm home, I develop it. Yeah. And day turns to night. It all goes on and uh, wear a mask wherever possible. So uh, yeah, that's how I'm getting through it. No worries at all. Shall we have a look at some footage of this this mysterious Orwa UN54 that I shot? Yes, let's. Oh boy, the, the comments are coming in thick and fast. I'm not sure if I can even keep up with them. Right, I'll get to you. Whoops, okay, that was my uh, DSLR. Let's have a look at some nice footage here. Well, firstly, where am I? Boing, here I am. Right, I'm in the corner here in the uh, in the cinema. <laughs> Remember cinemas? Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll go back to the cinema when the new James Bond comes out. Put it that way. Right, let's have a look. So the usual kitchen shot, just to see if the camera's working and everything. This is Camden Town. That's up Camden Road. Lovely jubbly. It was it was dusk. Uh, the sun had uh, just about set, and look, there was a rainbow <laughs> in black and white. That's what a rainbow looks like in black and white. It just looks white. Interestingly enough, it was a lovely rainbow. Then we went up Parliament, uh, Primrose Hill. Some nice silhouettes there for the sunset. Oh dear, not much social distancing there. Uh, anyway, the uh, ubiquitous view of London. Hurrah. Don't bother coming. There's nothing going on. Uh, if you, Oh yeah, then I filmed this at 8 frames per second, a, uh, a, a lorry. And... Uh, it came out very nicely. It was quite dark, but I filmed this on the uh, the Umig Mini Five. It's got some eight. It's got some uh, low frame rate, and finally a single train coming up from Euston. I remember when these tracks. Every ten seconds there was a train going by, and I had to wait about five minutes for one single train to come out of Euston. Huh? Sign of the times. Anyway, it was a nice shot. That's Orwo UN fifty five. Everyone, nice stuff, and it's fresh as well. And when I run out of foam pan, I've got something to fall back on. Ah, how did I develop that? Ah, oh. Every time. Sorry about that. How did I develop it? Okay, for you for you developer heads out there, uh, I put it in Rodenol, developed uh, uh, mixed at 1 to 25 concentrate for six and a half minutes at 20 degrees Celsius. And then a uh, simple fix and rinse and uh, the jobs are good un. There we go. Easy enough. Get, get a bottle of Rodanol. Get some Orwo UN50, uh, 50, uh, 54 was it called? And uh, a reloadable cartridge. And then uh, basically a thousand feet, which is almost unlimited amount of shooting. Go and do it. Oh, let's have a look at some comments. Oh, let's see. My uh, eyes ain't not, not, not very good. John Oates, popping's not good. Okay, we've passed that. Uh, doesn't that? Yeah, in Draft Snow Town, it should have got. Should have got green, then have a hole in your chest. Damn, that's a good idea, John. I might do that next time. I almost got an eBay. There was an eBay auction for multicolored foam things on that, and I should have got one. I should have got a whole load to suit all whatever I'm wearing. Um, Peter Greg Greg Gregor Falk from Sweden says, last time I looked for Orwo Box Super 8, it was sold out. Great to hear it's available again. Uh, Agfa says, or Agfa Avifote is sometimes kicking around for color. Ooh, really? 
Agfa, Agfa, Agifote. Greetings, Ben, and all from, from Hey, man, Manny Salazar's in the house. Everyone's here. This is great. Um, I'll, have a, I'll look that up, uh, Agfa, Agifo. I had some good results with Agfa not long ago. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so so just to reiterate, I got it from Carl. Uh, well, I got it from Adrian Cousins, but but he got it from Carl. I don't know if he's got a special in with Carl or not, but uh, what am I doing on the big screen? I ought to get into, the, into my little box over there. Oh, here we go. Right, what's next on my list? Ah, oh, I'm feeling good. We've already burned up 11 minutes <laughs> on 20 seconds of footage. Oh, God, yeah, okay, right. Now it's all going to turn a bit, it's going to take a bit of a sad turn right now um, because cause I was so excited about my success with the UN54 that I tried my hand at this stuff, which is uh, called Svema Osh55. Osh, sorry, Osh45. I got the Cyrillic right, but I got the number wrong. It's Osh45, basically 45 ASA Standard 8 Svema film made in the Ukraine in... Um, in the during the Soviet times, it was expired in 1977. The USSR limped on for a bit longer, but um, the film was uh, sent to me by my good friend uh, Bill Maloney, Will Maloney, uh, or Bill or Bill Baloney, as he likes to be called. Um, yes, thanks, Bill. He sent me. A, he said he got it in Bulgaria, and uh, oh man, I went. I thought, oh great, this is great. I'm going to put it in my most Russian of all my cameras. And I go out, and then it snowed. It snowed last week in London, and I got all these shots in the snow. I got people sledding down Parliament Hill. I got the kids, and I got in the snow, and I got walking in the snow. And I even filmed the Russian Trade Commission uh, just next to Hampstead Heath for no particular reason, apart from that it's Russian. And I had Russian film, in, uh, sorry, Soviet film in the camera, and I was, it was a Soviet-made camera. Uh, Russian times Russian times Russian. Um, Unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, um, you know, three quarters of five tenths of bugger all came up. Um, I'll show you what came up. Look at this. Okay, here's something. I, here's part of it I developed. Look at that. Completely clear. You can see right through it. Um, here's some more. Uh, I tried different developing times. Uh, was, that was a completely blank one. In between blank and clear, there were no other images. There were just 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 varying shades of gray um another one yeah this is why this is what i spent monday and tuesday doing everyone uh failing to develop this stuff um and uh bill bill baloney bill malone oh, sorry bill bill maloney said he didn't have any 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 uh luck either with the stuff so look either he bought uh, uh, or some, somehow got hold of, get off the main screen, show people what it looks like. Some, either he got hold of a completely pre-blurred, uh, uh, exposed film, or the film was just so old that age fog had taken it. It, 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 was, it was completely dead. Even Kodachrome 2, given the right amount of, the right kind of developing, can, can come up with something. This stuff, whoops, pointing the wrong direction. There it is. This stuff was dead. It was completely dead. Nothing I did. I tried, I exposed, I pointed the camera right into, the, into a light just to see maybe it's it just really like one ASA or something. No, nothing, nothing, nothing I did. I put it in Rodinol. Uh, I put it in Caffanol. I put it in Orwo A71, which is a developer they don't even make anymore. Um, legendarily powerful stuff can develop Kodachrome 40. Adrian Cousins, bless his heart, gave me some a while ago. It did nothing with this stuff. I tried, um, I even tried, I put it in ECN2. I put some in with some color developing just to see. Nothing came out. Sorry, Bill. I couldn't, I couldn't do it justice. It came from Bulgaria to America, then back to the UK and was DOA, I'm afraid. Dead on arrival. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, and then I had another disaster because <laughs> I was, I decided, well, I've, I, at least, um, this stuff will work because I've tried this before. This is right here. You can see, I'm not even gonna bother putting myself full screen. This is, uh, Svema Osh 50. What's Svema Osh 50? Okay. This is Super 8, uh, not Standard 8. It, uh, expired in 1992. 
It outlived the Soviet Union, and um, uh, and I've I've had results from it before. So I thought, okay, all right, I'm going to salvage something from this this disaster. I'm going to try this. I'm going to put some of this in a reloadable cartridge uh, because it comes in 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 um, around cores rather than in cartridges. This is not a cartridge. This 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 thing contains a a, a can which contains a little. I've I've shown you another podcast on other shows i'm sure anyway you've got to reload it into a reloadable so i wasn't taking any chances this time i said if this stuff thinks it's 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 not asa 50 anymore that's for damn sure um i reckon it's asa 20 by now i just i i read um there was a few uh, uh joel on uh, on facebook he um he's been doing a lot with svema recently um i thought okay let's rate it at 20 asa okay so I uh, oop, I put it into a bullier, which you can, you know, do the ASA with, change the ASA, and I uh, tried it out. So what I did was this. Let's go to the screening room and uh, I'll show you what I did. I developed it. I thought I want to try this in, def in different um, developing times. I'll try three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes in Caffinol CH. CH is like CM, but with one gram of potassium bromide in it. Are you taking notes there at the back? <laughs> anyway, let's see. Let's see what happened. Um, so that, I put it up in this nice mosaic here, which uh, I put up on Facebook and everyone loved it. So I'm, I'm sharing it with you lovely people on, on YouTube. So three minutes is on the left. Five minutes is the column, the second column. Ten minutes is the next column. Fifty minutes is the next column. I filmed my projector. Uh, I had to bust that bolia down to two frames per second in order to uh, get enough exposure at 20 ASA because this is just filmed indoors with a, with a light. Um, okay. Now, um, yeah, some people said that this 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 famous stuff, this um, this Osh 50, can only is a reversal film. And yes, it's true. If you try and develop this and stick it straight in the um, in the fixer you'll get a very, very dark negative. All you home developers, watch out there. You'll get a dark negative. Uh, if you do a full proper reversal development, which is what you see in the very top right corner there, then, oh, <laughs> there we go, top right corner. 15 minutes in the Caffinol CH with the potassium bromide. Reversal developed, looked great at ASA 20, fantastic. Uh, the, the bit below that shows how it looks if you just Stick it straight in the developer, then straight into the fixer. And the bit, the, the bottom right hand corner is uh, shows you what happens if you just reverse that in Premiere or a computer, Adobe Premiere, or whatever you whatever you got there. Um, straight reversal. Um, in fact, let's look at those best those best two results side by side, shall we? Jamie, pull that up, will you? Um, okay, out of the way here. Okay, so on the left here, we're seeing the chemical reversal. That was with potassium permanganate bleach and more re-exposing. And on the right there, that's just gone in the developer, then fixer, scanned with the Wolverine, and then put into Premiere and reversed digitally. Okay, it'll come around again if you see. So on the right there, that's the original negative that I created and that's the positive I did. In the, so basically, on the left there is what you'll get if you project onto a screen, you know, with a Super 8 projector. And on the right there is what you get if you uh, cut out all that chemical reversal, do it on a computer. But of course, all you've got now is the, um, is the computer file, the MP4. So you can share that, which is lovely. Um, but you can't project it natively on super 8 and i know that's important to some people to to, to project on this on super 8 to be able to make a, a proper chemical reversal um so yeah so that's so so we've learned something already haven't we let's look at the uh at the uh let's see um suppose you'll get hold of a of a DIY thousand mag for the umic at the beginning of next season peter oh god what's he on about a mag a, a, a magazine for the UMIG? Oh, lordy. A thousand feet. I, I can't think of enough stuff to shoot. Um, uh, need a reseller account to order directly from Carl. Oh, really? 
Okay, okay. Well, Ichabod's um, says he needs a reseller account. So he's probably already gone online and checked it out. I, you know, I was lucky enough to get it via Adrian. Maybe he's got another role for sale. Could try asking him. Um, <laughs> that guy Mike TV is in the house. He said it snowed here too, and I was so close to filming it, but ultimately I built a snowman. Good for you, mate. I hope you're in the UK because most of the snowmen in the UK, this is an interesting cultural thing, they're, uh, shall we say, anatomically correct, the ones I've seen. So we, we like, in, the, in, in, the, in Britain, we, in the UK, we like to, um, you know, go the whole way with the snowmen. Um, anyway, Benjamin Marriott, I'm taking notes now. Another Ben in the house. Yay. Uh, is the Bolia less vignetting here? No, no, that is some vignetting. That is true. That is actual, you, good, well spotted. Uh, round the outside there, that's some serious vignetting. I was I was zoomed all the way out on that. That was a Bolia ZM4008 ZM4 with a Schneider Kreuzach Optivaron lens, 6 to 70, I think. Anyway, yeah, if you zoom all the way out, there is a bit of vignetting. It's true. And well spotted, that man. Anyway, we've, uh, we've seen enough of that. So we're, uh, yeah, so I've already shown, shown you how to, we haven't even got onto the meat of the show tonight. Oh my God. Oh, it's going great. We're, we're, uh, I've already killed 22 minutes and, uh, and we're not even up to the, uh, to the main event tonight. Right, what's the main event? Is there anything else to show you? Oh my God, yes, I didn't show you how, the, how that Svema came out. Uh, let's have a look at how that Osh 50 came out. Huh. <laughs> came out horribly. And that's not because I fucked up the developing. Pardon my language. It's not because of the developing. No, I underexposed. It's it's it needs it needs ASA twenty. I went out on a late afternoon um, with this stuff. Yeah, horrible. It it of course you know it looks great in that kind of like Soviet like that, that mad Dr. Caligari kind of thing. Um, yeah, I underexposed it, and what you're seeing is is after bumping it up like crazy in Premiere with the contrast and everything. It was all underexposed. It was it was it was late in the afternoon. You need sunlight or you need low 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 frame rates with this. And that's a shame because um the camera I was using to film this I'm about to get onto. It's a very nice camera and I do, should do it more justice than 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 showing you this 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 awful result here. Yeah. That <laughs> Language, Timothy. <laughs> I know. Cheers. I know exactly where that's from. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> mm. That was the Freud house in Hampstead. That was the last house he lived in in 1939 before um, before he died. He said, "Out there, there's a blue plaque." Let's, let me just let me just go back, back to that. Um. Oh, have I lost it? No, here it is. Yeah, the 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 uh, Sigmund Freud lived in Hampstead. That's about the best picture we're gonna get. I I listen. You got to go easy on me. I it was like about ten minutes to 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 sun to to, to blue hour at this point. It was so it was so it was really dark. And and to to try and get the Svema to expose in that these conditions, I'm making no excuses for my development. I did the best I could. I pushed it like crazy. And then, um, yeah, then that, that's, that's the best I got. Anyway, that's where Sigmund Freud lived in 1939. He was ousted by the Nazis, and then he lived in, he, he moved to Hampstead and uh, died like about a year or two later. He said somewhere, I think on a plaque outside, it says, this is my last address on planet Earth. Ooh, I think he got like throat cancer from smoking that pipe. Correct me if I'm wrong. He was a big cocaine guy as well. Mm. Just shows. That's chicken coming home to roost. Anyway, go to the Freud House whenever it opens. You can see how uh, you can see find you can see his actual uh, couch, the the original psychiatrist's couch, uh, psychoanalyst's couch. It's there. The one the Freud Museum in Vienna apparently is not quite as good because of course when he was uh, when he left Vienna he brought all his um, his stuff with him to Hampstead and then died. So Hampstead's got the good stuff, everyone. Anyway. Um, thanks for to Bill Bryson for telling me about that. Let's get on to the meat of the show, everyone. Let's get away from this that, that Svema disaster. Look, Svema's fine. If you you can still get a decent image out of it, you just need to 
expose it properly. Right, what's next? What are we looking at? Okay, um, right, oh yes, yes, I didn't talk about what I used to film that that debacle of, a <laughs> of an exposure there. Um, ben Marsh says, could use it to make a nice overlay. Yeah, there's always something good. You know, even when film is bad, it, it's good, you know? Even when it fails, it succeeds. It, the film has got, you know, you can't take away it, the organic filmness of it. Anyway, let's put on the, the, the overhead camera. There's my hand. Right. Let's see what I use to film that. Because this, um, this is a camera I've been saving up. To be honest with you all, I've been running out of cameras. I'm, <laughs> I've, I've almost run out of cameras uh, that I own, um, or at least interesting ones, to, uh, um, to show you on the camera show. And I don't want to just have to show you JPEGs of other people's cameras. Um, so I'm actually in an auction right now for a, uh, for a job lot of cameras. God knows how that will turn out. Anyway, here's the camera I used to film that. No, it's not the new Kodak. <laughs> Although some of you who know who who recognise the style of, of of bag here might might know exactly what um, what I've got here. Oh, little red. Uh, oh, what's that? What's that logo? It says lights. That's right. Damn it! I only went and got a Lysina, everyone. A Lysina Super. Oh my god, I've had this for a while. I've had this for a while. Let's get the slideshow off so we can give it some proper... Uh, proper. Uh, that's right, that's what this show is going to be about. As far as I can, I'm going to talk about Lysina's Super 8 cameras. Yes, a Lysina. Lysina made by Leica. You know, if, you have, if you've ever heard of a proper camera, you've heard of Leica. They're famous. They made cameras, they made lenses. Um, the, the guy, okay, I've got notes here. I'm going to have to go to the notes. My brain's already depleted of energy, uh, of, of information about Leica. The, the guy who started Leica built, uh, here we go, Oscar Barnack made an all-metal motion picture camera in the early 1900s, okay? Um, and then lights, uh, well, they made all the Leicas, okay? That's that's 35 mil stuff. That's stills cameras. I don't mind stills cameras. I don't, not a huge stills photographer, except just on my mobile. It's not my thing. I might do a show on stills cameras. I definitely would like to do a show on medium format stills cameras, because that's where it gets interesting. But anyway... Leica made a Super 8 camera. In fact, they didn't make just they didn't make a Super 8 camera uh, straight off. They made some standard 8 cameras. Let's see what they made standard 8 wise. Uh, this is a this is a Leica a Lysina. Of course, they called Lysina. They ch chucked Cena on the end for as in cinema. This is a Lysina standard 8 camera right here. Um, that, there's probably more pictures. Oh, there's a <laughs> there's a nice uh, advert there. For the Lysina, of course, featuring a lady, as they as was the uh, fashion in the time. And they show a lady there with a Lysina 8SV. That's also a standard 8 camera. Ben Reynolds says, I have two of these for standard 8 and neither work. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. Because I was about to go into this because the whole point about these is that they're supposed to be built like tanks and rock solid and, and they always work. No, they don't always work. Not every camera works all the time. But the Lysina were a damn good camera, okay? They went from those standard 8 cameras that you just saw to this, the Lysina Super, which was the first Super 8 camera that they made. Uh, they believe they made this between 1969 and 1974. Correct me if I'm wrong. Someone out there will correct me. Where did I get this from? Let's have a look. <sighs> Let's have a look. I, I know where I got it from, but I want to pull up, pull up the the exact quote from here, because the man deserves some credit. Okay, Jan Limpens, everyone. Jan, uh, Jan Limpens, he's a, he's a uh, Austrian uh, graphic artist currently residing in Brazil. I hope that's going all right for you, Jan. Um, and he gave me this because he knew I was into Super 8 cameras. He said this was the property of his uncle Lucky, who died. It was in the family for many years. He said, my uncle Lucky, I'm reading off my phone here because there's a message he sent me. My uncle Lucky, 
the original owner would have been glad, uh, as in glad for me to have it. Uh, <laughs> a proud communist all his life, he had serious health issues that committed him to hospitals most of his life. He died very young when I was a little boy. Damn, Uncle Lucky. I mean, who gave him that nickname for a start? I mean, damn, those Austrians have got some sense of humor. Jesus, confined to hospitals and then dying young. And But the, the guy bought a Lysina Super. You know, he probably filmed the, 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 the machine that goes beep and the... <laughs> And the nurse is coming in and out and maybe a bit of the view out the window and the hospital ceiling. Ah, I mean, what? A, you know what? If you're going to do that and you've got a bit of money at disposal, go for top of the line with a Lysina. Why not? You know, why have a, a life like that and, and, and you know, have a, a shitty crown uh, Halina plastic Super 8 camera? <laughs> I'm getting really off track here. Anyway, listen, Uncle Lucky. Salute. I I I uh, drink this. I to toast this to you, Uncle Lucky. We've got your camera. It's in safe hands here. We're having some good times with it. All right. So cheers. Mm. Maybe he was lucky to be born at all. Poor guy. Anyway, should we talk about the Lysina Super? since I've got one here, you know, this would be a perfect opportunity really to uh, talk about Lysina here with me here and with, with you all there and with the Lysina in my hands, you know, seize it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> have a, um, yeah, to, yeah, good, good on you, Manny, to Uncle Lucky, cheers. Anyway, Uncle Lucky's camera. Where do I start? Okay, it's heavy, all right? And I've now I've talked about, oh yeah, heavy is good, you know, metal is good. It doesn't feel like it has a, apart from some of these knobs, it doesn't feel like it has a single plastic component in the entire thing. This is a serious camera, okay? This is a, this is a camera that I can't, you know, I, I make jokes about cameras and I talk about these cameras and I, I, I like make wise ass comments about them, but really, you know, you the, the, with, when you're in the presence of a Lysina, you better stop making jokes and 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 respect it. Okay, what Lyca what Leica did? What, let me go back here. Leica created what is probably the 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 most technically uh, proficient and 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 uh, maybe not aesthetically, but um, technically perfect Super 8 camera ever made. Okay, I'm not. I'm not, I'm going to get on to the to the to the one that came after this in a minute. Let's talk about just the super. When you hold this thing in your hands and when you press, when you start filming with it, okay, I, I don't know how to describe this. When you, if you've been shooting Super 8 for a while, you get a feel in your hand for the vibrations the Super 8 camera produces, okay? You get a, you get a sense of how strong the motor is. You get a sense of how good the uh, shutter is going. You can hear it, you can feel it. And you can tell, yeah, this is uh, this was not a very. You can say, oh yeah, this is a quality machine, and it's going to last for a while. Or you can say, oh my god, this thing's on its last legs. Or you can say, well, this was a cheap machine. It was a piece of crap when it came out. It's a piece of crap now, but it's still going strong. God bless it. Okay. When you hold this thing in your hands and you start the motor, you think, oh my god, this thing is means business. It's not gonna. It's not gonna screw around with you when you when you start filming on this thing. Let me get the extra mic involved here. Okay. Let's get the. I want you to hear this. Okay. The extra mic is on. Now this is. Uh, I'm pressing this on the on the top, but this is not necessarily the uh, the, 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 the normal shutter used, but it's good enough. Now there's a kind of a. a noise. You hear that? You hear that? Ah, hear, the, hear the sustain on that? You can go out for a bite and come back and it'll still be ah. okay. <laughs> that, that, that might not actually be necessary. That, I think that might be a problem with it, but uh, I'll get onto that in a minute. It, it, I don't know. I can't tell you about it, it what it is, but the action when you start and stop filming on this thing. 
They're not messing about. This thing is heavy. It's in a metal box. Now, let's think about this for a second. Who are the people who demand the best cameras? Holiday makers? Um, people filming their kids? Who needs the best cameras? If you're filming your kids and your... Uh, maybe filmmakers, yes. Maybe photographers need the best cameras. You're wrong. Let's have a guess. Who, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this open to the to the YouTube. Okay, anyone commenting? Anyone with their keyboards right now? What branch? What profession of people demands absolute perfection in a camera? And it's not photographers. Okay, I'm gonna give you a minute to answer that. See if anyone anyone can work it out. But that is the group is the people who this Lysina and Leica are. Uh, uh, made a camera for. I'm gonna sit here and have a drink for a second. I'm sorry if that came up on the microphone. I apologize to anyone with microphonia out there. Okay. Yep. <laughs> well, UK Airsoft was funny. <laughs> he gave the funny answer. Soviet spies. Tio Manager, yeah, I'm going to have the first equal to uh, Manny and Ben Marshall. No, no, not Manny. No, no, Ben Reynolds. Sorry, Ben Reynolds and Tim Manor. Scientists, engineers. Uh, that is correct. John Oates said, doctors. Yeah, I'll give you half a mark for that, doctors. Scientists. A lot of filming went on back in the day. And believe it or not, video cameras and, uh, have, not, and have not been around forever. So before that, they had to have these cameras, okay? And this thing has been designed, well, maybe it wasn't designed for it, but it was certainly used. It was mounted inside, oh God, I think it was put in spacecraft, um, industrial applications, um, places where there's like, uh, where they have to test like train, uh, train suspension, stuff like that. They, they went to Lysina. They went to Lysina for this. They went to Lysina. Because this is the kind of camera that can be fixed in place and remotely controlled. And you know that... I'm going to put the sound back on. You know that that thing was, gonna, was not going to fail you, ever. You're not taking pictures of your kids opening presents in, in, at Christmas uh, with this thing, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm respectful of it. Because you you are holding this is a different league of Super 8 cameras. This shouldn't even be in, included with the with the with the Canons and the Bolias, because this was simply the um, the best engineered camera ever made. Okay, I'm gonna. I think I've said enough on that. Let's go to the actual camera. Let's see what this thing actually does. Okay. Right. Well, apart from those horrendous results you saw earlier. Um, okay. This is the basic run button. Uh, o is off, T is battery test, 18, 20, 18 frames a second, 24 frames a second. Let's see if I can get this better so you can see it better. Uh, should I zoom in or should I hold it closer and focus? Let's try zooming in. Let's try zooming in and then I'll... Uh, it's only a digital zoom. Piss ass digital camera. Okay, yeah, you can see it right. So that's uh, normal running. One frame a second. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, down here. Um, oh, that's the uh, the viewfinder on and off, like open and closed, because of course you've got to be able to close the viewfinder if you want to. That's your uh, your viewfinder eyesight adjustment for people like me who are one diopter away from being legally blind and getting a blue badge. Um, over here is your zoom speed because this thing zooms. That's on, it's on fast right there. Boom, boom. It's got blistering zoom. And if you put it, turn this around to zoom to there, it's a bit more sedate. Oops. Okay. Okay. Right. On top, what have we got? We've got lots of stuff going on on top. This is your, uh, your trigger that you can start, start filming with. You press it down. Of course it can, be, I'm going to get the, mic involved in here. Okay, if you press this down, this thing, you know, it starts the motor. If you press it and turn it, it locks in place. So, there we go. It will keep running forever there. 
And of course, it's got a screw there for your, um, you know, for your for your uh, remote. Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, you know, the the plunger thing that you uh, that you can uh, do your shutter with. Screw that into there. Release cable. That's what it was. Here it says stop, which is a bit funny. Stop. Let's turn this off. Well, no, well, I'll keep this. I'll keep the mic on for a second because look, stop. What it means is F stop. Basically, if you press the white button, it opens the f-stop, and if you press the black button, it closes it. That's uh, where we're running into trouble with this particular camera. Unfortunately, Uncle Lucky's camera is stuck on f2.1, 2.4, 2.4 about. It's, it's between 2 and 2.8, so I'm, I'm guessing it's 2.4. Not, it's not the worst f-stop to be stuck on, to be honest, 2.4, but um, there's no manual adjustment of that, so I am basically stuck with... No, neither of them work. It doesn't, it doesn't do it either way, but if it worked, it would open and close the iris with that. Uh, moving forward, there's, of course, there's your zoom. And here, 54. What's that? <laughs> Studio 54. 54 frames per second, everyone. So, supposing you're filming and you want to go into like uh, slow motion. Ah, it's going so fast! 54 frames per second. 20, 18 frames per second. I've got some footage to show you when that happens. It'll go from without even changing shot. It'll do that 300 thing where it'll go suddenly into slow motion. Let's turn it around. I'll switch off this. You know, this now. Uh, we've got the film compartment here. Let's open it. Uh, it's a bit stiff. A bit stiff. It opens it up. Nice. Wow. Really open, open air compartment right there. Uh, let's have a look at the ASA rating knobs here, because we are we are geeks. We are we are we're, we're called Ben. We like cameras and we like to look at. There it is. There's the. We like to look at the ASA ratings on various cameras. Uh oh, it looks like a whole row of knobs, a bit like the uh the old Canon 814 XLS. Is that knobs? Yes, yes, they're all knobs. It's not a sliding switch, it's knobs. Let's get that into focus because it's worth it. Oh, oh my god, my arm's about to give out. Oops. Uh there it is. Right, there's a row of knobs there. Uh, if you look, if you've been to previous Ben's camera shows, you'll know that the Super 8 cartridge will push in one or more of those knobs and tell the camera what ASA you are shooting at, so it can do its automatic thing. Row of knobs there. You only get that there. Ah, perfect. You only get that on the really good cameras, the like the Canon 814 or the 1014 XLS. Uh, not much else to see inside there. Let's get the focus back. Oh. Oh my god, my arms are aching after that. Oops, we've zoomed all the way out. Let's go back in. So, what have we got here? Now this um, is is your sun filter. Is your daylight or your tungsten tungsten filter there. And this is a, a, a f-stop adjustment. If you feel your, your um, stuff, your if you want to pump everything up a, a, a stop or two, you do uh, over to plus. Let me focus that again. There we go. So plus and minus. You've, you've got this on other cameras. Nice to have it on this one. Plus, minus. You know, if you put it on zero, it'll do whatever it's automatically metered for or manually, if this manual thing will ever work, which it doesn't. Uh, minus, you, it'll, 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 everything will be a little bit underexposed. Or not under, but, you know, it'll take it down a stop. Right. Have we run out of stuff? Well, let's look at the handle. Okay, this is the, <laughs> this is the only thing that people can find. Can, this is the only thing that people can find finds to complain about on this camera. Uh, you push this little white button in here and pull the, pull the, pull the ha strap. And out comes... For which, for a, a a heavy, bulky well, not bulky, but you know, a decently heavy camera comes a really sort of spindly little handle. 
people say, oh my God, this handle is, is like, Ugh. it's like, it's like having, it's like putting a, an apple on top of a toothpick, you know? But really, if that's all you can complain about <laughs> with this thing, um, the trigger, funnily enough, for normal shooting is this white thing here, which is operated by the thumb on the back of the handle. See? Uh, let's put it up. So, you're shooting, you hit the thing with your thumb. Most Super 8 cameras, they've got a little trigger on the figure here. No, like it. Lysina. Lysina says, screw you guys. We're doing it our own way. We're impressed with the thumb, which is quite nice in a way. I've done that and it's it's all right. Um, and here's our uh, foot, here's our frame counter. The strange thing is that goes around that's like frame counter, but I, I don't really see a, a footage counter on this thing. It's not this. That's a that's a battery. Um, that's a battery test thing. Yeah, I don't see anything to tell you how much of your cartridge you've shot, which is bizarre. Hmm. Huh. Well, anyway, maybe someone can el elucidate me on that. Now, you're probably wondering, what's this weird-looking thing on top? Well, that's where the batteries are. Most Super 8 cameras, they, they hide the batteries in the handle. As you can see with this, it's far too narrow to fit any batteries in there. So they put the batteries in this thing here, and that's the eyepiece below that thing. Now, I'm going to show you how the batteries fit in this thing. And because it's such a pain in the ass that I've made a film showing you how to do it so I don't have to do it now okay so <laughs> I would waste seriously I'd be wasting 10 minutes of your time if I did it so inside that battery thing is this which is a let's put some music up for this why not worst possible music okay so yeah you, you basically fit five double a batteries into this thing which is weird weird because you just it Super 8 cameras, they have two, some have four, some have six. Hardly any of them ever have five. I mean, what is going on with that? Probably someone, someone out there, whoops. Oh, I give up with the music. Someone out there with electrical uh, knowledge will know why you're putting out five. Um, why am I getting a buzz on my thing? Why, why, why you need five in there? I've, I've, I've been messing about so much. I didn't show you how the, the, the thing goes in. Anyway, you, you put five, basically you, you, you don't so much, um, you don't so much insert batteries into the camera as you have to build, build it around the camera. You have to build the camera around. Sorry, you have to you have to build the camera around the battery. So you manage to, and it's very 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 uh, fiddly. You get five batteries into that thing, and the thing, the funny thing is, is that that thing. Well, I'll show you what it what it's designed for. You think, well, why would they put the batteries right in front of your eye? You know, why? why? Let's get rid of that. We've seen that twice already. Ah. Uh, Ben Reynolds says it only needs 7.5 volts to run. Well, probably. Yeah, I'm, I reckon. But, you know, some of these cameras, like the Bolias, they've got two different voltages at play. One is for the light meter and one is for the... For the um, uh, one is for the... Uh, sorry, my microphone's all over. Headphones are all over the place. Um, yeah, one, yeah, yes, Ben, you're right, forehead rest. Basically, I'm going to, I'll show you what it, what this thing is, how the, how they basically asked people to use their camera. Let's look at the instructions for this thing. Oh, move the camera away. Uh, for the Lysina Super, this is a PDF I got. There it is. <laughs> look at that guy. I mean, <laughs> you're not going to look like the coolest guy in the, on the block with this thing. Oops, that's, oh, oh, wrong one, wrong one. Um, yeah, you, you basically put this thing, you rest that thing against your forehead with the, with the eyepiece against your eye. And the idea is, is that with your forehead and with your two hands, you've got a three, a, th a sort of a three mounted position um, for the, to keep the camera steady. And let me tell you, 
it works. You <laughs> absolutely. I'm going to. I'm going to have to bring this up on the uh, on the main screen here. Well, let's firstly let's just uh, see if there's any more anything else in the in the instruction manual which is of interest. Yeah, it's all, you know, I mean, yeah, it tells you everything that I've already told you. So, oh, 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 apart from that thing, which I'll get onto later. That's exciting, that thing. Um, so, yeah, this is a forehead, forehead rest. I'm going to put myself back on the main screen just to, uh, to show you the proper, this is the, the proper shooting position with this thing. You hold it in the hand, you smack this thing against your head, and... <laughs> And boom, the eyepiece, bloody hell, it is in absolutely the right position. I mean, you can laugh, and people do laugh at me on the street. They point at me and say, <laughs> lock him up. Um, but uh, yeah, forehead rest does work. The only weird thing is that, I don't know if it's weird, but Uncle Lucky's forehead's been against that thing, and I've been, I don't know, I don't know catch what he had but uh yeah anyway a bit of bit of uh, uh alcohol and uh swabs will uh, sort that out i'm sure they cleaned it so yeah it's a forehead rest basically the battery compartment doubles as a forehead rest rather than as a hand held um device so, <laughs> so there you are there you have it the lysina super let's look at some footage yay finally Finally, we're looking at some footage. It's 52 minutes in and we're looking at some footage from this thing. Okay, I didn't just shoot the uh, the horrible, um, you know, this stuff with the Lysina Super. I mean, it did its best. It's stuck on 2.8, but still it was too much. It was not enough light. This is what I shot with some 7240. Again, given to me by Adrian Cousins. Um, everything I do, it seems to be, uh, 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 helped along by Adrian. He's such a great guy. He helps everyone. 7240 Ektachrome. I filmed this on the South Bank. This was in like February or this was either, it was just before the, uh, the, uh, the lock, the lockdown started or anyway, it came out nicely. I developed this in ECN2. Much better, much, 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 much better. This is ectochrome. I it's about to have a negative. Now, oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. Okay, this is where I went from. I can't stop it. I'm I'm going to rewind that. <laughs> Shows my age. I'm going to rewind. This is where I went from uh, 18 frames a second all the way up to what was it called? 54 frames a second. While the people are walking across the bridge there, I went all Pink Floyd. And I, I shot here. Okay, see if you can see, well, you'll be able to see, where I went from 18 frames to breathe, breathe in the air. There we go. See, that went to uh, slow motion, which is nice, really nice. I walked across the Hungerford Bridge. Have we got any decent music for this? Why have I just got nothing but new metal? Ah, oh, my lovely wife. Sissy. Yeah, she, she puts up with me stopping every 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 10 minutes and uh, filming her and filming stuff. Always got a smile for the camera. Isn't that lovely? Uh, that's in the South Bank. Sissy on her phone. And some views out the window. I did some uh, still images as well, which you can see quickly. Blah, 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 blah. And then finally, I tried the, the, the 54 frames a second here, filming some stuff. Uh, well, water. You can't fake slow motion with water you can't it's um there we go so yeah it's a nice camera i got some nice shots out of it ah now that's the cat now i need to so show you that but, but oh i've missed it uh well this is this was okay this was of interest to anyone who does home developing okay that was you know normal developing i i did an ecn2 i uh did a bleach and then i did a fix okay develop bleach fix that's how color pro Proce negative processing goes but I, I did a bleach bypass for the last uh, couple of seconds of this sh of this uh, shot which means that I skipped the bleach stage and here's with bleach and here's there's without bleach looks pretty awful um, Manny Salazar you were asking about bleach, bleach bypass I think I might have overdeveloped it as well uh, I don't know no, 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 wait there's no difference I just it was in the developer for the same amount of time I just bleach bypassed it Anyway, so that's uh, that's of interest there. Ah, right. That is that. 
Now, of course, the, ble uh, the Lysina Super. Lovely camera. And we're finished with the Lysina Super. Thank you, Uncle Lucky. It didn't, but the story didn't end with the Super. Lysina went on. They made something called Lysina Special. Okay. Lysina Special. Advert for that. Yeah. There, that's the Super RT1, which was like a, a Super, but better. It's like one more, you know, the RT1. It's like one more. Oh, crap. My keyboard, everything's falling apart now. That's what happens at the, when we, when we hit, go towards the hour mark, I get punchy. Right, that was the RT1. That's another one that says um, available. It's got a few more features. You can lock the aperture by turning that knob. There's a few other things you can do. This, oh, come on, get off the green screen. There we go. I'm going to switch off the green screen. Oh, it's, it's back. This is the Lysina Special. And it is special. Okay, everything I've said so far about the Lysina goes doubly for the special. It is a hell of a camera. It is, it is, it, it even puts the Lysina Super to shame. The Lysina Special, I'll get on to it in a minute. Let's have, what are those, what are the people saying on the, on the YouTube? Um, good, <laughs> uh, good if you've got a benign tremor, says uh, Benjamin Marriott. Does that mean if you, yes, if your hand's a bit shaky, use your forehead. Um, uh, oh, John Oates has to go. Never mind, Be John, let's, uh, let's uh, see you later. This is all recording. Very smooth. Nicely done on the Will Bill Malone. It's nicely done on the 7240. Never seen it developed as a negative. Whoa, that's a huge difference. Four, what a blunderbuss of a lens. Right, yes, well, that brings us up to speed. Yes. Um, incidentally, 7240, it's supposed to be for um, uh, developed as a reversal, but it's, um, yeah, it can be done in negative, as I've shown, with a bit of color correction, to be honest. It did come out a bit purple. Okay, the Lysina Super. I don't have a Lysina Super, but knowing me, oh, I'm going to get weak one day. I'm going to get weak and I'll see one for a good price and I'll think, yes, I have to have it. The Lysina Super, firstly, it has a removable lens. It's in that uh, very, very um, uh, select bunch of cameras, Super 8 cameras that where you can actually remove the lens and put another lens on. And as I went into at great length on my previous show all about lenses the like the lysina um soup uh super has a lens uh change oh, oh, let's get it on here okay that was the super uh this is the special though special there we go <laughs> the spukel um there we go the lysina special yes it's a damn fine camera. Oh, my God. I mean, this is the kind of camera you, you, you take this thing to the beach and film your kids. You are disrespecting this camera madly. This camera needs to be in a rocket sled shooting <laughs> would-be astronauts, you know, uh, 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 testing out. This, should be, this, this is the kind of camera they use in, in where well, they used to use in horse races, uh, s track stewards at, uh, at, at race courses use this camera. This is a serious piece of kit. Okay. And the, uh, okay, I, what I've got here, oh my God, I've got four pages of stuff about this camera. I don't know where to begin. I really don't. This is, um, this is the Lysina Special with a different lens on it. A bit more uh, compact, but also very, still boxy. Still got all its features, which were just with a different lens. Okay, there's a website called, I'll show it here. Uh, Barnak Berek blog, where he writes what I think is the best article I've found so far about the Lysina special. I'm just going to read a couple of quotes from it, from this, uh, from Bar Barnak Berek. Um, he says, arguably the most sophisticated Super 8 camera ever made. Let's get the nice picture of it. Oops. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. Okay. Arguably the most sophisticated Super 8 camera ever made. Um... This was, okay, after the Super and after the Super RT1, this was Lights', Lights final try to gain sales on the home movie market. Unfortunately, success was denied, yeah, because of video. The less elaborate and less expensive competition won. 
uh, electronically controlled camera body through the lens metering. The ASA was as you could select the ASA uh, manually, so you didn't have to, you know, mess around with those that row of switches you saw. You could uh, obviously manual exposure. Yeah, it could run at uh, single frame, nine, eighteen, and twenty-five frames a second, uh, and the and the fifty-four that I was showed you before, the fifty-four frames a second. Um, what else could you do? Oh, you could do yeah. Huh. Just lap dissolves with a single button. You could do with this thing. You could, um, it had a hell of a viewfinder. It says even for eyeglass wearers could 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 use the viewfinder. Uh, with one hand on the hand grip, the other on top of the camera and the forehead against the rubber pad in the back of the camera, the camera offered an extremely sturdy three point support, even during hand holding. Now, I'm such an idiot that I thought it meant hand-holding like you're, go you're walking along with your girlfriend and shooting. You've got one, you're holding her hand. No, no, no. Two hands on the camera, forehead against the camera, no girlfriend. That's how, that's how this works. Um, the small dial changed the filters. Yeah, fair enough. It didn't even use C-mount lenses, this thing. It uses Leica M-mount, which are very much more sturdy. You could put all sorts of lenses on this thing. Uh, you could put 35 mil lenses on it. You could put um, uh, lenses that you'd put on an Arri. Uh, you could put, it came with two, there were two types of lenses, a, um, a 10 millimeter micro, macro Cinegon and the 6 to 66 1.8 Optiveron, which is very similar to the Bolia one, made, manufactured by Schneider in Kreuznach, Germany. Um, it could do everything. It could go from, 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 it had a, it had a, um, oh, oh, I haven't got onto the best part. Well, it's not the best part, but you could get this thing for it. A control unit. I've got the instruction book here. This control unit, this is the dog's bollocks, this thing. If you put this thing on a, uh, oh, why does it do that? I have to have my hand on here to, to see anything. If you put your, uh, put one of these jobs, Let's just switch that off. You, if you paired up one of these like Lysinas with a control unit, you could do la uh, um, lap dissolves. No, you could do time lapses. You could use the control unit. You could, you could, it could uh, use. Uh, it could activate a tape recorder at the same time as whenever you start filming. It could send sync pulses to the tape recorder. Um, you could uh, there read all that quickly. There, see, that's what you. That's what. That's what we're talking about. It's complicated. It's got all these like uh, knobs, not knobs. These uh, different um, jumpers and 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 cables. Um, yeah, you could you could activate it remotely. You could uh, you could get it to expose for uh, longer periods of time. I think I think it had the B on it. I mean, you were basically unstoppable with a Lysina special. Uh, the only thing that's going to stop you is how much money you got. <laughs> let's see. Let's have a look. How much do these things cost? Well, let's start low. Let's start with the, the super that I just showed you, the one that I actually have. Okay. £219. These have been sold recently on eBay. I'm sorry, Americans. This is all going to be in pounds sterling. Uh, I don't know. Add a third or something for dollars. 219 pounds and that's for the lowest for the lowest level Lysina. the uh the one that i've got uncle lucky's uh you go up a bit up a bit range let's see what we've got not working not working 254 pounds and it sold oh that was for a special okay we'll get onto the working specials in a minute oh my god they're expensive um oh this one works without a lens 440 pounds even without a lens Let's go up to like a really, a Lysina special with a lens and it's working. Oh my God, it, we're getting into the stratosphere. £729.26. These are not prices people are asking. These are prices people paid. 692 uh, 608 What's this one? This came with a leather case. Okay, 569 not bad. This one, yeah, I don't know if that... Is that just the lens? This one's with a lens. A special with a lens, 485. Bet there's something wrong with it. 
Let's see what was. Let's see what the matter was with it. Oh, it's all in German. Oh, okay. Well, the, oh, um, no, no. It, just to save time, I'm not going to try and read the German. Um, I'm, I'm assuming something. Either something was wrong with it, or or it or someone got an amazing deal on a Lysina special. These cost more than Bolias, everyone. They cost more than Canon 1014 XLS cameras. These are not in the same price range. They're out of the range of so many Super 8 cameras. You you can forget that they even take Super 8. They're so they're so expensive, specialized. If you have one of these, don't worry. Even if it breaks, you'll get a decent price for it. And if you want one, go to the bank. You <laughs> get a loan. Jesus. <laughs> they're expensive. I mean, look, I mean, get a super. Why not? You know, I have no I have no business owning one of these things. I have enough Super 8 cameras. And yet, and yet I want one. I want it. It's <laughs> special. It shall be mine. My precious. Oh, boy. Anyway, <laughs> that's the Lysina. When, when people say, when there's arguments about, you know, what are the very greatest Super 8 cameras? And someone pipes up with, well, oh, Lysina. You know, it's just, it's it's like saying Michael Jordan to an argument about basketballers. Lysina just kind of changed the game. You know, they changed the game and they ended the game, to be honest. What happened was people stopped using Super 8. The factories and the scientists, they all found high-speed video that they could watch immediately. So obviously they moved to those. The Lysina specials got put on the market and other Super 8 cameras, we're talking like 1979, 1980 or so, other Super 8 um, manufacturers, they started making them cheaper. They sent them out to Japan, even Bolia and Bolex, they sent them to, they sent their designs to Japan to be made because it was cheaper. They limped on, they struggled making uh, some rather substandard cameras for a couple of years and then they finally fell flat and that was the end of that lysina made i'm gonna put my i'm gonna put my main camera my, my overhead camera on just so i can make a point with my finger lysina made the greatest camera super 8 camera ever made and then they dropped the mic and then they said that's it we're not we are not compromising quality we're not going to start making video cameras did lysina make video cameras i wonder I don't think I've ever heard of a Leica or a Lysina video camera. They, they make digital cameras now with video capability. But anyway, they said Super 8. They just said, right, we're going to make the best camera ever made. And then we're out. We're done. So that's it. That's, the, <laughs> that's, the, that's my take on the Lysina. And as I said in my last show, I'm one Google search away uh, ahead of the rest of you. So I'm, I'm, I'm really not um, an expert on this stuff. Uh, but I'm glad. I'm very. I'm very happy with this thing. With my Lysina Super, I like. I, I even like the names they gave them. You know, Super and Special. That's it. There's the make the, the the Super Super Eight camera and the Special Super Eight camera, and that's that's it's very Germanic there. It's very like, yeah. Well, we, first if we make this camera for the Super Eight market, and we call it the Super. Yeah, very good. And then we make uh, this one. Whoops, I've unplugged myself again. Make this one. It's a very special camera, and let's make this good. We'll call it the special. Oh, Super 8's finished? Okay, we're finished. We made the special. Can't improve on it. We're done. Oh, boy. Ah. Oh, anyway. Bill Maloney's in the house. Bill, who gave me the uh, that, that Svema. He said, if you plan on going on holiday in the future, hit me up. I have an Iwa Marine pack for the Super 8. I'll be happy to send you. Ooh, Bill. Don't tempt me, sir. Oh, don't tempt me. Anyway, listen, I've gone on long enough. I've gone on long enough about this. I was worried I wasn't going to fill an hour, and it's, 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 it, I've filled an hour 10 minutes, which is brilliant because I didn't have to bring out, I didn't have to bring out my uh, Hail Mary. I'll save that for another show. Uh, talking of other shows, very exciting, everyone. Why am I on the screen twice? This is not Ben's, Ben's, Ben's camera show. This is Ben Plus. It was good night for me. There we go. Um, next week. Exciting. We're not finished yet. Don't all go away. You've got nowhere to go. I know. There's nothing else going on out there. I've been, I can tell you. 
next week i'm really excited we're going to start bringing in guests february is guest month everyone i've done three shows now just on my own and next next week we have the great Daggy Brundert coming on. We're going to do a show about developing and home developing and interesting development potions. Daggy Brundert is the world authority on making photo developer out of like rosemary and, and foraged flowers and just, just stuff she finds growing by the side of the road. Amazing work she's done. She's She's, she's, she is in high demand um, and uh, for her witchcraft. She's self <laughs> her self-explained witchcraft. We're going to have her on next week, which is really exciting. And for all you people who are asking questions every week about home developing, many of them will be answered, not all of them, maybe. Let's, hang on. Why have seen a special? Why is that still there? There we go. Um, so, yeah, we've got Daggy Bronda uh, also coming up. Also coming up. Uh, Mike Long from Frameboy24. He's got a great YouTube channel. He's at about the same level as me in terms of expertise, which is, uh, you know, about sort of like whatever. <laughs> uh, he's a, uh, and he's, he's made loads of really fun films about, uh, about uh, messing around with the Super 8 cameras. So I'm going to have Mike on. Um, also coming up, well, I, no, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you the other guy because he hasn't. He hasn't confirmed quite yet. But yeah, someone big in the world of Super Eight, and I'm uh, waiting for some answers from uh, from someone from let's say from east of here before I do a show all about all about that. Very cryptic, I know, but I'm going to keep you keep you guessing on some of those. Really exciting. Let's go to the finale of the show tonight. We are going to... Oh, everyone's excited about Daggy coming on. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited too, really. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. She says she's going to blow minds. She's ready to blow some minds with, with, with stuff, she said, which is great, with her witchcraft. We're going to show... We're going to watch a film at last. Yeah, phew. Right, let's get into the screening room. And we're going to have to turn the lights off and all the rest of it. So uh, give me a moment here. Let's see finally got some music it's the same old crap music i use every time jesus i need to do something about that i need to go on youtube and find some more free music now is it filming yes there we are there's my hand that's to prove to you okay the, the dslr is pointing at a white sheet of paper where upon which is projecting a regular a standard eight duo 100 let's turn some lights off and we'll watch some stuff let's watch some stuff oh yeah okay And finally, the big light. Okay, right. So what have we got tonight? Tonight, um, we do not have any uh, copyrighted stuff from Disney. We have some found footage. We have some footage. I don't know where I even got it. I think a, a friend of a friend gave me a bunch of reels and... Um, and one of them had some film on it. I was just after some blank reels. He doesn't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. People sometimes just sell or, or get rid or dump all their old home movies. And it's sad because sometimes they all end up in a landfill. There's some, they all, you know, no one ever sees them again. Film doesn't deserve that. It deserves to be seen by everyone. So listen, if, you, if anyone recognizes anyone in this film I'm going to show, then by all means... Uh, <laughs> call in, and uh, and and we'll we'll get it reunited. So let's have a look. There we go. Very wholesome tonight. Very wholesome footage. Oh. Let's see if I can get it a bit brighter. Scout. Whoops. Ugh. That's better. Oh dear. I've probably done it. I've probably gone too far there. It says Summer Camp 1972. Schiphol. It's a bunch of scouts. Uh, 
bit too bright there. There, 400. That's done it. Skip it around. See, they, they've actually taken the uh, taken the, 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 the time to make titles. Oh, let's put some music on. Can we get any better focus, maybe? Let's try. Okay, I think that's long enough on the title. Goodness me. Yes, we got it. Madur Madaro Madarodam. Not sure where that is, but let's have a look. Oh, come on, scout troop. I've not actually even seen this footage. Ooh. Okay, they've underexposed the first bit. Ooh, dear. Here it comes. Here it comes. I think. Oh. Are you telling me the rest of this film is blank? Ah, here it comes. Finally. Gouda! Gouda, where the cheese comes from, everyone. Or Gouda. <laughs> We're going to see something other than uh, the titles here. Oh, I see. They probably used a whole film up. Just making titles. Oh, please. Tell me there's some more footage than this. Just titles of Dutch Dutch cities here. We might as well talk about this. So, so. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I saw it. I saw a frame, a frame of something. The first half of this film was so good. The problem is it took me. Rotterdam. Hey, let's name Dutch cities. There we go. Here's something at last. 72. Some... Look, there's... It looks like a private school, maybe? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a school with a groundskeeper? Oh, someone in uniform. Maybe it's... Uh, the scouts have all grown up and they're doing the national service now. Yeah, that looks like either whatever called the ROTC. British Playgrounds of the 70s. I should know. I went to a few. <laughs> I started going to school in about 1975, uh, 6, 1976, yeah, so um, I remember the hard asphalt. Oh, is there any more? Okay, we're just going to have to bear with me. Oh, uh, now is a good time to put up the credits for next, next week's show. Yay, there we go. Next show, Darkroom Witchcraft with Daggy Brundert. At, uh, on the 4th of February at 7 o'clock. Ah, oh, I've had fun tonight. I've had a great fun, a great deal of fun. Uh, was there anything? Here we go. Something else here. And I'll be back next week with more. What the hell do they film here? It's flowers. It's like dead flowers. Ooh. Okay. That was a bit random. Is that all we're getting? Oh, no, something else. Some, what looks like more dead flowers. Oh, what, a, what a lovely way to end off with some, what looks like possible cemetery footage. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> someone likes flowers. Why not? Let's see if I can get the picture over there we go it was out uh, I was I was, I was crowding the picture there ah uh, Benjamin Marriott says candid random footage is the best yes yes you found found footage oh look we're going somewhere it's a whole cemetery so someone went to a cemetery and got lots of oh my god it looks like some kind of like uh, unveiling or dedication going on here um there we go. I wish I could read what was on there, and I, in standard, even in standard date, I can't. But you know, good for them. They've, a lot of people turned out for this this plaque unveiling, and then a speech, which we shall never know the words of because this was silent film. But hey, props to the camera person for uh, <laughs> for filming it anyway. Because and look, someone got presented with something there. Oh my god. 
Okay, I'm, I'm assuming a scout camp went to uh, the Netherlands to unveil a plaque for some reason, and then there was a party afterwards. Yeah! Kick out the jams! Let's have a party! <laughs> My drink's run out. I drank a whole pint of vodka during this show. Uh, oh, I like that guy's glasses. Oh yeah, I can I can get with that. This is absolute Super 8. Super 8 brilliance here. Now, let's try and... Uh, if anyone recognizes any of these people... Oh, my goodness. What the hell's going on here? Uh, okay, it looks like some kind of team-building exercise amongst the scouts. Well, I don't know why they have to be partially undressed. Maybe it was a very hot day. They're all pulling something. Okay. This guy's probably, like, in his late 60s now see this is this is this is i don't know this is this <laughs> hold your jokes about british people's teeth americans that shit isn't nice okay that's it that's it we're done we are done it's the end of ben's camera show for this uh for this week where have i gone here i am ah uh, thanks all for coming Okay, it looks a bit of a a, 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 a junkie. Here I am. And in this horrible lighting, I'm going to say goodbye. And I'll see you next week with Daggy. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you, everyone, for commenting. And, um, yeah, I had fun today. Even though, you know, sometimes the uh, the show isn't the best, you know. Sometimes I have to wing it for part of it. And then sometimes that's comes out the best so go figure maybe next week I'll, I'll be really really well prepared and it'll go horribly not true because daggy's gonna be here daggy brunda 4th of february see you all next week everyone bye <laughs>